We looked at lots of different schools that already had uh, uniform policies. We looked at dozens of the actual policies from schools around the country. Um, we talked to administrators and teachers in schools who had uniforms. We looked at everything that we could find as far as reading, pro and con. Um, and every week we met for several weeks. We came together and we talked and we hashed over what we talked about the week before and we had arguments and you know we didn't all agree that you know we didn't just sit down one afternoon and say okay we're going to do this. We spent a lot of time talking about the issues and talking about the specifics. Um, for example, would we allow waivers? And, and that's something I'm going to go into in a few minutes, but yes. You know, we have talked about a lot of details um, about the dress code. And as we, as we read more and more and more about dress codes, we came to the conclusion that we felt that um, having a uniform policy instead of going down the enforcement route we after we looked at all the benefits of the uniform policy we really felt that the uniform policy would have greater benefit for our school district and so at that point then we started looking at the specifics of the of the dress code um one thing that i told everyone last week i, I want you to just consider that all of the people that have served on this committee have volunteered their time to do this and have spent many many hours out talking outside of the regular school day and it's not a decision um, that we came to lightly. Um, and I think that all of us um, have a heart for children and a heart for what we do. And we love working in the public school system. And so this was not meant to be punitive in any way. Um, it wasn't meant to take control over your children. We felt after we looked at what had happened in some other schools that it would be have a good benefit for our, our district. So that's where we were coming from. I'm not going to go through everything that's on your handouts, but they're at the front and back of the first page are all um, either statistics or anecdotal evidence that we looked at very specific school districts and what they had to say about uniforms. And many of them did see increases. Now, as I said last week, as a committee, we don't believe that this is going to solve every issue that we have. But we do think, or we do believe, that it will help. And um, if, you, if you would be open-minded and look through the schools that we've listed, the papers that we've listed on those two pages, you know, you will see that there were positive results in many, many schools. And so that's where we're coming from. Um, go ahead. I'm going to skip through this slide on statistics. We did talk a little bit about free and reduced lunch. It was very similar. A lot of people have been very concerned, rightly so that this will be expensive and there's been really some kind of outrageous claims about how expensive it will be and so we do have a few people who are going to speak to that in a minute, their personal experience with uniforms, but we did want to show that there are a lot of school districts who have very high poverty rates who have implemented uniforms very successfully and the people in their school district are finding that it is very cost effective and less, much less expensive than buying regular school clothes. And my daughter graduated from Notre Dame in 2004. And Jared went to Catholic school early on, and the cost of uniforms is significantly less than the cost of dressing my children, especially in an adolescent and high school setting. Um, one of the things that we were kind of skeptical of when Megan started wearing uniforms at Notre Dame was we did have the logo shirt. But I was just throwing out some old things since she's graduated and she's moved away from home now. And the other day I found the receipt from the first set. The initial investment was $185. And she wore those five polos and one sweatshirt. We added another sweatshirt through the years. Um, but she wore those the entire time she was at Notre Dame. And I will share one other thing with you. I was speaking to her on the phone tonight. Um, and she was asking me why I was doing this because I feel like I have something to share with you all. And what she said to me was, you know what? My daughter. My daughter. Yeah. She said, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I didn't have to think about what I was going to wear tomorrow. She goes, we got up, we went to school, everybody looked the same. And bottom line, education is important. And when the kids all wear the same thing, you are not distracted in the classroom. And I, as a parent, get some bit distracted when I see what some kids have on. Much less 14-year-old or 16-year-old young man or woman sitting next to someone else. So 
um, I don't know if that helps you all, but it was significantly less and it let the kids shine, in my opinion, from the inside out. I think that at this time we were going to allow some uh, committee members <coughs> to speak very briefly and then uh, we were going to take comments from the audience. My children used to go to parochial schools and wear uniforms. Um, and then they came over here to the public school, which I'm very excited and happy that they are here. Um, but I have experience in both worlds, and I have experience as a parent, and I have about four of my children at home telling me I shouldn't be here because they don't want the dress code. So I get it and I understand it, um, but I also sit at my desk at the high school every day, and I see it and I get it there. And I have to look at my own kids and say sometimes what's better for everybody is what we have to do. And even though I believe my children go to school in dress code every day, I can't tell you what they do once they're out of my eyesight, because they are kids also, um, but they leave in dress code. I do believe that it would benefit them to be, in, uh, to be in uniforms. I believe it would help them to be on that same level field so they aren't distracted either. That is my own personal story. Being an administrator up at the high school, um, I know we've had lots of conversation about enforcement, and I will tell you that we do enforce what we see. There is so much subjectivity in it. Um, we talk about uh, student self-esteem, and we, that has been heard a lot also. Um, when I call students into my office and tell them that their really cute outfit they can't have on, that also hurts their self-esteem. So there's obviously, there's different, there's pros and cons on both sides. People may not understand the 1,200 kids at the high school and how many students are not dressed appropriately. <coughs> even if your child is, that's great. But the other kids that aren't are taking time away from your child and the learning that they should be doing. And as far as a uniform goes, as a teacher, I can look out at 25 kids and I can know like that if they have the dress code, if they're in dress code or not. With what we have now, because it's so vague, it's much more difficult to enforce. And there, it is more subjective because, you know, well, no skinny jeans. Well, what's skinny? What's skinny to this person isn't skinny to another person. And so it's just, it's going to be easier. Easier doesn't mean that, you know, nobody's doing their job. Easier means we have more time to teach and the kids have more time to learn. And my feeling is that that's what this is going to benefit the most, is the kids, and that's what it should. Well, I don't think I can speak as eloquently as the people before me, so I had to write down what I needed to say. Um, I know many of you, um, because my daughter went to school with your children, um, and I think that on a whole, we do what we can do to make sure that our children are coming here. My daughter's at home, she doesn't want me here either. Um, but from a young age, girls are encouraged to be strong and smart and bold. They are told that they can achieve any goal they set their mind to. And I believe this for my daughter, and I believe this for all daughters. Um, unfortunately, the media is sending mixed messages and without proper guidance, we have some girls that buy into the fact that acting sexy will help them succeed. They buy into the message that dressing provocatively will help them get their way, earn them popularity, and make them feel stronger as females. Without proper guidance, daughters want to show up to school in clothing that leaves little to the imagination. And without proper guidance, they start to view what they are wearing as more important than what they are thinking. We have too many issues at the junior high where girls who aren't getting the proper guidance at home are asked to change their shirts, zip up their hoodies, change their shorts, pull up their tops, put leggings on under their skirts, and so on. It is a distraction to the learning process, and believe me, it is a distraction to the junior high students. I feel implementing a school uniform policy can help protect everyone's innocence. And I feel that innocence is important when we're talking about children. So at this time, I'll have uh, Ms. Ring and Dr. Copeland 
uh, to identify the first two speakers. So if you would, any uh, one that would like speaking, please raise your hand. Uh, my name is Ray Boyd. My daughter, Helen, goes here to the junior high. She's in the 80th grade. This is past year we transferred from St. Vincent's to the junior high here. And so we have pretty recent experience with uniforms, and I just want to share our experience. Um, my daughter was after four years going to the junior high, and four years going to St. Vincent's, basically had no friends. Uh, she was ostracized by the other girls in her class, all girls wearing uniforms. We came in here. She has yeah. all kinds of friends. I think this is a wonderful school. The girls are welcoming and accepting to her. She has friends in the seventh grade, the eighth grade. None of them are wearing uniforms. So uniforms are not a panacea. They don't guarantee a well-behaved child. Parents guarantee a well-behaved child. Five foot eleven inches tall. Think about being five foot eleven inches tall at a school dance. I'm going to do everything that my daughter feels good about herself. And if wearing clothes that fit her, that look nice. The performance or enable them to focus on learning. And of course, as was stated in the PowerPoint program, I've done a little research on it. I've seen where there's a significant dip, decrease in discipline issues and increase in academic performance. The kids are going to get better grades, but even better than that, they're going to learn. Because grades aren't everything. It seems to level the playing field and clothing, and I've done some observation of students, and there's quite a bit of difference in what people wear. When I've seen the uh, parochial school systems here, it really does instill school pride, and also some individual. That's one one out that. So we're all going to wear a uniform throughout life, whether you're going to be at KFC, Chick-fil-A, IBM, Procter & Gamble, Brewery Company, City of Cape, hospitals, as was pointed out. Um, so, you know, your children probably ought to kind of get with the program. So you can express your individual taste in clothing after school hours. Hello, my name is Lori Catazzo. My husband, John, and I have a daughter who's a freshman at Central High School, and we've been involved with the Cape Public School District for the past 10 years. I've also been a substitute teacher for the district for the past nine years. I am very in favor of a stricter dress code, but very against uniform dress of any kind for Cape Public School. One of the reasons that my husband and I chose Cape Public School for our daughter to attend is that we felt like it would better prepare her for life beyond high school. When she enters college and eventually goes into the workforce, she will encounter people that are different from her. They may physically look different than she does, they may have different beliefs than she does, and yes, they may dress differently than she does. She is going to have to know how to peacefully coexist with people who are not all exactly the same as she is. To me, that is what public school is all about, accepting differences not demanding that we all look, believe, or dress the exact same way. That is why we chose public school over private or parochial school for our daughter. I also believe that if you, I, I also believe that if you had every K public school student line up and walk across that stage in something they normally wear to school, and we as parents, teachers, and administrators would simply give them a thumbs up if they are within dress code, or a thumbs down if they are not in compliance with the dress code, most students would get a thumbs up. There is a percentage of students that will get a thumbs down. There are students who wear, who wear clothing that is either inoffensive or inappropriate. As a parent, I have seen it, and as a substitute teacher, I have had to deal with it. But that percentage of students is the minority or the smaller number of students. Forcing mandatory uniforms is punishing the majority of students who are getting it right because of the smaller number who are getting it wrong. And yes, I do 